I've been toying around with this idea for a little while, wondering if you'd be able to use the same principles as a parametric design where you take a larger file and break it into sections and cut each section individually, but reduce the space between each section where effectively you're still creating a solid model with all the pieces. So I thought about this originally as a way of doing full scale three dimensional pieces that are larger than the machine would allow. But just to do a proof of concept, I decided it would be fun to try and make a wooden vase with one of our machines. Um, and I decided it would be cool if it wasn't a typical vase that are typically made on a lathe where it's a symmetrical cylindrical shape. So I found this image of, well, I just looked up cool vases and I found this image. Uh, and I thought it would be a, a pretty cool shape to try and make, uh, especially out of wood. So I imported that image into Blender and I created a outline of the general shape and then just from there did my best to sculpt a three-dimensional version of it. Then after I got the model completed, I created an array of 21 different planes that would end up giving me 20 sections of the face. And I had these old shelves laying around from uh, one of our old studios that I knew I wanted to do something with eventually and I thought this would be a good project to use them for. So I knew that my biggest limitation was probably going to be the Z height as opposed to the X and Y. So I tried to keep in mind that these were around half of an inch thick pieces of material. So essentially once I had all the planes, I did a Boolean difference cut on the 3D model to get the different sections. And then I laid those out in Blender trying to leave enough space for a quarter inch bit to get in between them, but without using up too much space where they would go off the edge of the material. So it was a bit of trial and error of exporting from Blender and bringing it into Vectric and seeing if it worked. Next time I would definitely use Fusion 360 for this, just because they're a lot better at set dimensions um, as a CAD designer than Blender. But I was able to break it down where I did five different sheets of the half inch plywood. So each of the 20 sections fit somewhere in those five sheets. I tried to keep them grouped together best I could because I didn't have any way of labeling them. Uh, I could have included it in the models, but that would have been a lot of extra steps and I could have added some kind of V-carve text that I could have ran an initial toolpath with a V-bit, but that seemed like a lot of work. So I just decided I'd end up using a marker to label them. The first one I did was parts four through seven because it fit the most amount of parts on the single piece. So it would give me the best idea of whether this idea was gonna work out or not. I brought those models into Vectric and then I created a double-sided toolpath in order to get the contour on both sides. So you'd get any kind of internal or external slope because you'd be going at it from either side. And that would get rid of some of the limitations of three axis machining. Plus you'd also get the inside contour. So it's gonna be a full hollow body as opposed to if you had done a full double-sided cut just of the model uh, with a thick piece of material, you would get the outside shape, but it wouldn't be hollow in the same way that this one is. When I brought it into Vectric, I realized that my biggest issue was going to be securing these pieces for the second side of the cut because they'd have to be suspended using just 3D tabs because there'd be no connection to the bottom and they'd be completely standalone individually and with all those tabs connecting everything you got to make sure it's pretty structurally sound for it to remain in place while it's still being machined. I tried out an orientation where I was trying to keep a pretty good line of uh, support through all the pieces and when I put it on the machine it was looking really good and then one of the pieces ended up flying off when I flipped it over. Uh, surprisingly, all the other ones stayed on. I thought that that would kind of ruin the structure of everything, but everything else came out fine. I just lost one piece and I was able to grab that part of the 3D model and put it on a later piece of material and get it carved. So for all future ones, I just made the tabs a bit thicker and that actually worked out really well. I needed to find a balance of not making them so thick that it was really getting in the way of the shape of the pieces, but also not so thin that they'd snap off like they did with the first stock. And then from there, it was pretty much just rinse and repeat of that machining process where I have the layout of the models, I create the double-sided toolpath, put it on the machine, do all the sides, flip it over, get the other side, take it off, cut the tabs, sand everything down a bit. And then for assembly, I would glue everything up and just kind of feel to make sure they were aligned by hand. 
A better thing to do if I was working on a bigger piece would be to use some kind of dowel alignment. If in the modeling software I had ran a dowel hole that was pretty consistently aligned through all the pieces, that would be a better way of aligning things. But just given how thin these walls were, I really didn't have that option. So just lining it up by hand and then cleaning up the seams with some sanding worked really well. So I just did that process over and over again. And in the future, I definitely would just put all the pieces on a single sheet of material that's bigger than what I was using and then just have all the pieces that I need for this and uh, glue it up. But in the end, I actually really enjoy the way that the plywood kind of hides the seams. And it's also just a really nice way to use a piece of scrap material like that where they were probably just gonna get thrown away, but now they get to, you know, hold flowers, which isn't that beautiful. So at the end of the day, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. I think the system worked really, really well. There's a couple kinks that I'd wanna try and work out, whether it's trying out using Fusion 360 for some parts of this or just using different models. I know there are still some limitations that come with this form of machining, but it definitely opens up a lot more possibilities of things that can be made with three axis machining. And I really hope that anyone who watches this video gives this workflow a try. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions about it or if this exists already and there's already resources out there. I just think it's a really kind of cool way to use these machines and I can't wait to see what you can do with it.